Hey guys, Ernie here and welcome to the Paleo Hiker MD channel. Now, if you've watched the channel for a while, you know that I love stoves. I've done all kinds of stoves, but if there's one category of stoves that I've kind of stayed away from, it's liquid fuel, mainly white gas stoves. Well, that's changed quite a bit recently. I've picked up quite a few liquid fuel stoves to check out, including this one from Coleman. Stay tuned. I'll show you guys what a brand new Coleman white gas stove is all about. Thanks for watching, guys. So why have I not reviewed many white gas stoves in the past or pressurized liquid fuel stoves? Well, I live in Louisiana. I live at sea level and it's hot. I mean, even in the winter, you know, we may have this last year, we had a crazy cold snap where we were below uh, freezing, you know, close to like single digits for like two days, which is crazy, but that's very, very rare. These liquid fuel stoves are really all about high performance in really bad situations, really cold environments, for example, and I just don't experience that very much. So when I was getting different stoves and testing different stoves, I just didn't think much about the liquid fuel or white gas stoves. But look, if I'm gonna be the stove guy, I gotta look at all the different stoves, much to my wife's chagrin. So we were in Branson, Missouri the other day, picking up our kids from camp. Well, I say the other day, it's more like six or eight weeks ago, but nonetheless, we were picking up the kids from camp and they have a Coleman outlet there. And I always like to go by and check it out. And this time they had the Coleman Sportster 2 liquid fuel stove, so I pick one up. This is the dual fuel Coleman 533 or the Sportster Model 2. Dimensions are 7.8 by 7.3 by 7. Weight with no gas is two pounds. It will use either white gas or unleaded fuel. Output, it says, is 10,000 BTUs. It will hold 17 ounces of fuel and burn about two hours on high on that 17 ounces. So pretty long time. This is made in the United States. Price is $80. I paid a little bit less. I paid $65 at the Coleman Outlet in Branson, Missouri. Uh, but you can pick it up for about $80. I'm going to show you guys how to light it, and we're going to do a two-cup bowl test. Now, I don't normally use white gas stoves inside. Um, I, I use my Sfea inside, anything that I feel really comfortable in the lighting process that you're not gonna get any spilled fuel or anything. This is a pressurized stove and you can very uh, easily pressurize it so you don't get any spilling of fuel. So I'm, I'm comfortable doing that. If you are going to use a stove inside, do it at your own risk, be smart, know what you're doing, understand your stove. I'm just gonna run it for a little while to do a bowl test because it's like 110 degrees outside. So the way that you get this thing going is there is Two things you need to do. First is pressurize the system. This is closed right here. You'll unscrew it and you can put your finger over the end here. There's a little hole, okay, on the end and you create pressure by cl closing that up with your finger and pumping. You wanna pump about 10, 15 times and then try to just close it without releasing too much of the pressure. And then on the other side here, you'll see, and it gives you instructions. This is fully closed, it's medium, and then to, to light it or on high is all the way to the right, okay? So we're gonna light this up. I'm gonna put this in a position that's comfortable for me. You will hear the pressure start to come out. I'm gonna move this a little bit forward for you guys. I'll get you a better look at everything. We'll turn the lights down here in a second, but to turn it on, you'll start to hear the pressure. You can hear it. There it is. Turn it on. Woo, just like that. As it gets more uh, preheated and warmed up, you'll lose this blue, or you'll lose this yellow flame and it'll go just blue. And it's already getting there. And leave it on high. And there you go. I mean, it's already pretty much doing its thing. I'm gonna turn off the lights here so you guys can see this really good. There's our flame, okay? We can turn it down. It is difficult to control the flame at times. One of the negatives of this stove, it just kind of goes way up real fast. I'm gonna try to lower it. You just gotta be really careful. If you wanna do a real low simmer, it can be difficult. And if you're going to do that, you really need to keep an eye on it and cover it, keep it uh, out of the wind because the wind can easily blow it out. I probably can blow it out right now, just like that. You can see that was nothing. So, if you're gonna keep it low like this, now of course if you crank it up, there's no way that I can blow it out. So that's it on high. 
10,000 BTUs. I'm gonna go ahead and set up for a two cup boil test and let's see what we get. I am gonna try to measure fuel consumption as well. Okay, we're gonna keep the lights down, but uh, we've got two cups of water at pretty cold. I took it straight out of our little water dispenser here, 50 degrees, so pretty chilly. Let's turn this on. I did measure uh, the weight of the whole stove and then when we're done, we'll reweigh it and we'll see how many grams of fuel we use, just for curiosity's sake. There it goes, crank it up to high, put this on, turn this on, and let's see how long it takes to get these two cups of water to a boil. Really awesome little stove. Now I'm sure you're probably kind of curious to get a really good look at this flame in the dark. So you know what? Let me show you guys what it looks like at night. It's a pretty cool flame pattern, and then we'll come back and see how our boil's going. You might say it's kind of slow because you know compared to a lot of my other uh, videos this is a you know you would have expected a little faster but remember we started at 50 degrees water most of my temperature starts are 68 to 70 so big difference 20 degrees which means that 3 minutes 37 seconds or 3 minutes 36 seconds is pretty darn fast because we started at 50 degrees I'm going to pull this off. Let me check and see how many grams of fuel it used. Okay, so it used 10 grams of white gas to get that up to, to a boil. Again, pretty impressive. 337, starting with 50 degree water. I'll take it all day long. So like with most stoves we review here on the channel, let's talk pros and cons. From the standpoint of pros, it's quality construction. It's made right here in the United States. It's got a lot of spare parts. They're readily available. And this is a really time-tested design. I mean, they've been making these types of stoves at Coleman for many years. It's a very stable base. It works in all different weather conditions. You can use different types of fuel. Now, I don't like to use anything other than white gas. It gets a little shady to me at times. I'm just not comfortable burning unleaded gasoline. It is highly volatile and I would do it in a real emergency situation, but if I'm going to fuel my stoves, I'm gonna use naphtha or white gas. They also burn a great deal of time on a small amount of fuel. Now that doesn't mean that they're all perfect. There are some negatives or cons to these stoves. This stove doesn't come with a carrying case. You can buy one separate, and I'm trying to find one, but I cannot find one. They're not easy to find. They're heavy, okay? They're not lightweight stoves. And dealing with the white gas can be a little bit fiddly. It's easy to uh, spill it. Uh, you have to deal with carrying it. It's fairly heavy to carry. That's why I would probably use this more in a base camp situation. It's not a lightweight stove option. It also gets really hot. I mean, super hot, and it takes a good long time to cool off. You also don't have the best flame control. It's not terrible, but if you're wanting to really simmer something really low, it's not easy. Now there's nothing subtle about this stove. I mean, it's big, it's heavy, it's stinky, it's hard to deal with at times, but here's the deal. It just flat out gets the job done. I have not personally taken this stove up to high altitude or to super low uh, temperature conditions but people say over and over, you can read all the reviews, people say this type of stove is bomb proof and it will work for you in any conditions. I think it's really hard to beat for the price. This is a very well and reasonably priced uh, stove. I bought it at a Coleman outlet. You can pay a little bit more for it. Say on Amazon, you can buy it or any of the other retailers online. Don't hesitate to buy it. It works extremely well. I have an old Coleman stove that I've done videos on in the past year. I'll put links down below. There was like a Peak One. Did, that was like a 25 year old stove and it cranked right up the first time I used it. I figured I'd buy a new one. They look very similar. They have very similar designs as to how the valving works and everything. Absolutely great. 
time-tested design. Do me a big favor, guys. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up down below. It really does help spread things across YouTube and helps the channel grow tremendously. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscription button. And if you wanna make sure you don't miss any videos, hit that notification bell. You'll be the first to know. I will add this video to my stove playlist. Tons and tons, well over 100, almost 120 videos on the stove playlist these days. So if you wanna know anything about different types of stoves, whether it be liquid fuel, gas canisters, alcohol, wood, solid fuel, all kinds of stoves, check out that playlist. As always, guys, I really appreciate you checking out the Paleo Hiker MD channel. If you want me to review more liquid fuel stoves, let me know. I will sacrifice and make some purchases. Thanks for watching, guys.